for your tea with real people, real tea, or some of you may know me as Glow, as in hashtag go with Glow. Today we're going to talk about several different programs uh, that are out there. I don't know if you guys know about them or you, you won't need to show your bank statements or your tax returns um, to buy a property. So Rich from Cross Country Mortgage is going to tell us about a few programs that are out there where it's not the traditional way of getting a mortgage, of lending. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Well, thanks for inviting me. Hey, on this rainy day, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, tell us about it, Rich, tell us about it. Because sometimes, you know, people prefer those type of loans where sure. you don't gotta like show your taxes and your pay stubs and all sure. that. You know, those kind of loans right now, Glow, are really important because a lot of people have had some income challenges because of the pandemic, especially last year. Self-employed borrowers in particular maybe had a drop in income, they had some challenges, so now they're providing their bank or their credit union with traditional tax returns and their income's down. And underwriters typically, what they'll do is they'll look at the lower of the two years, so if they had a great 19 but a horrible 2020, then they're gonna rely on the 2020. So what we've got now is a handful of programs that are alternatives, if you will. Okay. So one of the alternatives, now you mentioned bank statements, it's interesting, one of the alternatives actually just relies on bank statements. Okay. So they don't look at tax returns, paycheck stubs, any of that stuff. They measure the cash flow based on the deposits. So if your accountant, as an example, had a lot of write-offs for you last year, it's really not going to be a factor. Okay. They're going to look at that cash flow. A lot of businesses had a lot of cash flow, but they also had a lot of expenses last year. So we can look at that cash flow from the bank statements and qualify right there. Another option that they do that we have now is what's called a 1099 option. Okay. So if you're not familiar with the 1099, that's for independent contractors and people that are paid without having taxes taken out. That program, and there's a lot of people in today's gig economy that actually fit that mold, your contractors. I think if you're driving for Uber, you're getting a 1099 at Uber Eats and those types of things. Okay. So they're just going to, when most of the time when somebody goes to their accountant with a 1099, they're deducting all their mileage and all the gas and all the maintenance on the car as an example. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes down to the bottom line, it's pretty low. What we have is a program where we just look at the number on the 1099 and we don't look at any of the other income. So, or any of the other expenses, I should say. So it's a great alternative. There's also another program which is a little bit newer to the marketplace, but it is basically the business owner can create a profit and loss statement for us mm -hmm. for the last 12 months and they'll take the profit and loss. Oh. So, and that investor has also given us an opportunity where we have something that's more like a true no doc. We don't look at any income, any uh, check stubs or any of that. The issue with that one is that we do need 25% down. So they are asking for a more significant down payment, but there's also big risk because they're not looking at the income. Right. So significant down payment. And then we talked a little bit ahead of this mm -hmm. where the interest rate's a little bit higher. Now keep in mind, while you might pay a higher rate of interest for these programs, you're at least getting into the home. And one of the reasons you're paying a higher rate of interest, for example, the extra interest might cost you, let's say it costs you an extra $2,000 a year. To show the income mm -hmm. that you would need to qualify to get in that home, you might end up paying 20,000 or more in federal and state income taxes. So would you rather pay a little more in interest? So it's, you know, Right, or a lot more in taxes. Okay. So there is a trade-off there, mm -hmm. and you're getting into a home, and we know that home ownership is really the greatest way to build wealth, and, and it's a game changer for everybody in retirement, really. So then is that three that you talked about? Do we, is there four? Yeah, we, we talked three? about four, actually. So we okay. talked about the bank statement program, we talked about the 1099 program, we talked about the program where you could just provide a profit and loss, and then one that's just, they call it a no ratio, but they're not looking at anything as long as you have 25% down in good credit. Good credit's considered north of 700. Okay, north of 700. Yep. So there you have it guys, four different programs. If you needed to try to get a loan where you don't have to provide bank statements, I'm sorry, not bank statements, check stubs and or your taxes. 
Like I do have a client right now because of the pandemic, she had a really bad year. So she didn't qualify for what she thought she was gonna qualify for, even though this year is better because they're going by 2019 taxes. Um, a lot of good information. If you have any questions for Rich Kimball, my contact information is on this page. I can put you in direct contact with him. If you have any questions in general about real estate, reach out to me. I'm happy to help you. And I'll see you guys next month with a new topic. Thanks. Thanks, guys.